Welcome back, this is the Clay Golem. We're back in Foundry VTT, our Fandelva and below the Shattered Obelisk adventure series. Uh, so in the last few videos, we got massively sidetracked by figuring out some traps and stuff like that, mostly prompted by this area down here. So that's been an interesting journey. Um, <laughs> <laughs> a little bit challenging um, but we got some really good results now so now I've got my default um, sorry my templates for my puffball traps that I've liberally scattered around here and a couple of my stinking cloud versions and they're work working much nicer but move on we need to move on so in this video I want to see if we can finish this wave echo cave location uh, so we can get this done and move on to other things so I need to go to my journal I need to open my wave echo cave bring this up and we need to add on our remaining locations so let's uh, let's crack on shall we all right so the next location we need to do is the booming cavern uh, and make sure that that is a map location there it is. Uh, the Booming Cavern is actually area 16, so we can slap that in there. And that is this area up here. So let's get that out there. Uh, let's create our other points and we'll come back and, and then fill in the details of it. So our next one after this is the old stream bed. Okay, make sure we've got it on a map location here. Uh, number 17, easy peasy. Uh, and chuck that out just here. So that's referring to this snaky piece of tunnel here. In fact, actually I might move that just over to make sure that's clear where we're referring to. We've now got the collapsed cavern. Olapsed cavern. <laughs> collapsed cavern there. Again, make sure it's on as a map location. This is area 18 nearly there i know i haven't filled in any details but you know there we go uh just two more to go which is these two areas up here so let's again slap in their uh their markers that's the one um there we go uh and this is area 19 bosh that's this area here, if that's not obvious. And our final area the priest's quarters. Oh, again, terrible typing. All right, that's area 20. Brilliant. And if that wasn't obvious, that's going to be this little room here. Good, right. Oh, we're nearly there, aren't we? Hurrah. So let's go back to the booming cavern then. It's area 16 over here. Uh, and do a bit of editing here uh, and of course we've got our usual stuff that we're doing with the copying and pasting just to slap that in here so everything is in this one place in the journal nice and easy when it comes to running the adventure we've got it all here out of a number of video videos ago somebody made a suggestion about um, when we're opening these can we pop out um, our uh, our journal entries and have them in a different screen in the same way that I have the official module in a different screen uh, and the answer is possibly <laughs> um, there is a add-on module called pop out which is designed to do exactly that now I'm in the foundry app so the the software app foundry at the moment and you can't pop out from there if I log in through the browser that pop out thing should allow you to pop these things out or rather this whole journal and be able to move it to another screen just so you know in case you're wondering that is definitely a thing it's uh it's called pop out go and look for that uh, for me personally i haven't encountered a, an opportunity where i need to use it um, and i've not covered that particular module yet and had a proper look at it but it exists if you're wondering all right so what we got going on here then? A narrow ledge overlooks a large cavern that houses a surging, seething body of water. The rhythmic booming heard throughout the mines is louder here. At regular intervals, a fresh surge of water funnels through this chamber and slams against the wall just below the ledge. The echo suggests that this cave might, might be one arm of a much larger cavern to the northeast. Now, of course, 
couple of things here. This goes off the map. And it is t entirely possible that the characters decide, with the help of boats or whatever, to go exploring off of here and just disappear and go see what else is there. Um, if they do, I'm in a bit of trouble because I haven't got any plans for that. Uh, but I can make whatever, make up whatever I want. I could choose to have an entire extra encounter area off of here if they chose to do that, which would be great. Further adventures. Um, the other thing we've got is this is describing about the loud booming sound. And we've not put hardly anything in the way of... Have we put any sounds in here at all? It's mostly really quiet, isn't it? Um, I think we put some for the crackling fire um, in Area 11. We need to find a crash, a loud crashing wave, booming crashing wave sound to put centred on this area that actually regularly kind of goes off and can be heard throughout the entire thing. So that's something I'm going to find in a minute um, once we finish going through the rest of this. So uh, the sound of pounding surf gives Wave Echo Cave its name and can be traced to this water-filled cavern. Thank you for that. Um, the ledge that hugs the south wall 15 feet above the water, so that's long here. However, when the water surges into the cave every two minutes, it rises, raises the water by 10 feet. After one minute, the water level returns to its normal depth of 20 feet. Um, so the flooded cave is home to a giant octopus that is attracted to any light above the surface of the water. Do you know what? I forgot this was kind of in here. And when I was... <laughs> I, honestly, I, I, I wasn't cheating. I was talking about the problems of, you know, uh, Naznar being stopped by this rather pathetic couple of violet fungi. Um, yes, a bit more legitimate being stopped by this room with the flaming skull. It's like, well, what about this? And I was saying about we need to put something in the water, the watcher in the water kind of thing. Um, I'm not sure if this has been added in as part of the extended um, shattered obelisk part where they rewritten bits of the module and, and beefed it up or if it was in the original one but yeah it's talking about the fact that we've got this giant octopus um any character lingers with a lantern torch or other light source the octopus rises from the surface and attacks its tentacles are long enough to reach targets along the ledge but the creature is uh, but creatures more than five foot from the ledge are safe the octopus pulls any creatures into the water a character who starts their turn in the water must succeed on a uh, DC 10 strength saving throw to remain afloat. Um, on a failed save, they're pulled underwater, which isn't great, is it? So, have I got a giant octopus? Or is this something we're going to have to come up with? Now, I mean, it, it says giant octopus. Um, that should be, I would imagine, a natural creature. Yeah, look, there's one in there. That's brilliant. That's made my life much, much easier. So because that's going to be lurking in the water, uh, I'm going to move that out of the way just so it's not obst obstructing us. Uh, I'm going to pop it about here and I'm going to hide it. Okay, so giant octopus, we can deal with that if they come along this path. That makes a bit more sense. Um, again, we have got a slight challenge of Nesnar has dark vision. There's no reason he'd be exploring along here with lights. Therefore, is that octopus actually a problem for him? Eh, we can fudge that. We'll probably fudge that through role play. If the characters start asking awkward questions, then um, I will just make something up. <laughs> uh, so this talks about the northeast cavern. All right. So the larger cavern uh, to the northeast is an underground lake, uh, several hundred yards across. So they're talking about this bit over here. Um, that offers access to several other passages and cave systems. The miners of Fendelva Pact made preliminary explorations of those areas, but records of their excursions are long lost. The hot springs that produced a regular surge of water lie somewhere beyond. Characters can enter the water here. Uh, who enter the water here discover it's warmer than would be expected for a subterranean lake. Okay, fine. That's all they're going to give us. So, uh, really, the next thing I need to do for this area is go and find an appropriate sound. So, uh, I'm going to be back shortly once I've found something appropriate. I'll see you in a moment. Okay, I'm back. Um, yeah, 
doing a bit of uh, searching trying to find something that's going to be suitable for this found a few things that kind of might work um, but they were all kind of a bit long and not really what I needed um, and I was thinking oh well, I'm gonna have to become a blinking sound editor now and find software and everything else I remembered I got my son sitting in the room right next to me uh, <laughs> who makes lots of music and stuff like that and it's like oh can you just and he's just thrown something together for me which is going to be perfectly adequate which is brilliant how very useful so I need to add a new sound onto here let's do that um, and I'm going to put it I'm going to base it around here and I'm going to make it massive now remember this is a sound that echoes throughout the whole thing so first of all let's find my audio on here uh, I'm going to stick it in my DM folder of sounds uh, I need to upload uh, wave echo cave here it is okay so I want to use that one all right and because you can see straight away that it's going to understandably um, initially abide by walls and things but because we want this to echo around everything I am going to say not constrained by walls so now it will be absolutely everywhere almost didn't quite drag it quite big enough but I think that's okay and I do definitely want that volume easing on so let's make it a bit uh, let's go as far as 400 um, which should take it almost you should, so almost as soon as you get in you can start to hear it and the further you get in the louder it gets that's kind of what I want um, volume easing yes it's going to get louder the closer you get to it and I do want to put that volume up um, we'll, we'll test it of course <laughs> I don't want to deafen the players when they're close by but I do want it to be loud as they get closer to it um, right good now let's um, uh, is there anything else I need to do on here I don't think there is um, da, 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 da. right let's have a listen to that um, it's not playing at the moment is it do, 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 do. oh have I been preview ambient sounds I know it's not necessarily particularly realistic in the echo, but it does add a nice bit of atmosphere now what I don't want is it playing repeatedly over and over and over again like that so I do really want to put it on uh, some kind of uh, some kind of timer I have no idea how to do that um, <laughs> Uh, the other way I could do it, of course, is just periodic, periodically just unmute it. Perhaps as they move around and things, it doesn't have to be exactly timed and things like that. That's fine. Um, my only problem with that is the risk of me forgetting to blink and do it. But, yeah, we have a sound in there. Hopefully that sounds all good to you guys from where you are. Um, Oh, I always have a problem with the sounds of how loud it actually is um, because it depends you know obviously how long I've, how high I've got my speakers up so if that was incredibly loud and deafening you I do apologize um, but uh, I will test it and I will alter that later anyway just to make sure it's a reasonable volume so Chuck Haley up here somewhere oh, she hasn't got a light source come on Put your light on there we go and of course she won't be able to see the octopus so with Haley in here i'll be able to move her around and just check that but i'll do that off screen you don't need to watch me do that all right that's this section done brilliant bosh gone all right um next then the old stream bed we need to do this area here um, this is quite a another relatively simple little area so we slap that in Okay, so this literally is just a little passageway. So this passageway is barely four feet high. It's obstructed by rounded boulders and pebbles. It looks as though it might have been a stream bed, though no water flows here. 
Um, yes, it flows from one area to another. We can see that on the map. Well, we can't because I've got <laughs> alien. We can see it flows through there. Uh, the dwarves diverted the stream into the channel leading to area 12. So they diverted the stream from this channel to go through here, the, the dwarf made, not man made, dwarf made channel um, to drive the water wheel. Uh, the earthquakes that rocked the cave during the spell, um, the final spell battle of the bandit invasion, collapsed the floor in area W18, which we haven't got to, diverting the stream once again. So really there's nothing here for us to worry about. Now the only thing is is that it's a it's a short tunnel. So we could of course use our walls um, and make that um, you know a bit more uh, kind of you know, put our walls in, put our heights in on it so short creatures can see and tall creatures can't. But to be perfectly honest I'm not going to bother with that because I don't think it adds anything. It's just I need this marker here that if we've got taller characters going through they're going to be at disadvantage for lots of skills because there's not enough room to move um, perhaps penalties on decks and things but what are the chances they're going to be a fight in there um, unless they've decided to flee from a fight down there in which case they're stupid and get everything they deserve so that was nice and easy that bit's done uh, so now we need to do the collapsed cavern which again fairly straightforward there is a bit of action here which is nice all right so um, let's make that bold so we know that that is a reedy outy bit just to help us when we're running the the module itself um, and there is a bit of treasure to go in this bit as well which is good finally finding something worth bothering with so Neznar's lackeys occupy this cavern uh, the spider's, div spider's divination suggests that some valuable treasure is hidden in the bottom of the rift that was created when this area was destroyed. So somewhere down here. Um, two of the four bugbears in this area clear rock on the rift floor while the other two... So let's grab bugbear. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Didn't want to do that, did I? Oh my life. What is wrong with me? Can we highlight bugbear? Thank you. Let me just drag you in. Um, in this area, okay, so we need our bugbears. We've got bugbears in our monsters, in our humanoids. We can stick a bugbear here. We can stick a bugbear here. Um, and a couple of others just out. So two of them in this area clear rock on the rift floor. So these two down here. While the other two stand guard in the western half of the cavern watching for any undead incursions so let's put one either side of the stream watching for undead um, possibly coming from either of these directions so these two get to work in the pit um, you know first in line to get ripped to pieces um, okay um, watching for any undead incursions a doppelganger ma named Valak supervises the operation in guise of a drow all right so we need our um do 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 do, do, do. now i can't it's bugbear um what are they monstrosities doppelganger okay cool so we've got our doppelganger that's going to be here as supervising but we don't want it to look like a doppelganger so uh its appearance we're going to find a different token um, we're in monstrosities here um, we don't want to be in monstrosities we want to be in humanoid is there going to be a drow excellent let's just slap a drow in yep that's fine that will do absolutely default token no problem at all okay so um, his name is let's give him a name he's got a name let's use it there's nothing worse than characters decide to ask somebody's name and you have not ready for it. And you're like, uh, uh, and you're <laughs> you've either got to look up or think of one um, off the top of your head. I always, uh, they always end up called Bob or something horrific. <laughs> so that's not good, is it? All right. So uh, display name hovered over by owner. Don't worry about that. Resources always for owner. Correct. Um, that's good. So Valek to normal bugbears. All right. Um, if a fight breaks out in the main cavern, the two bugbears in the rift climb the ropes to join the fray. So these two will climb up, assuming that the characters come from that direction. Um, so the rift itself 
don't need a whole section for it but apparently you know that's what they're giving us the rift itself is 20 feet deep there's a great opportunity for players to uh to um, to use shove and shove things off the cliff here for 2d6 damage uh there's a development section here so if three or more bugbears are killed the doppelganger tries to retreat to area 19 which is back to the temple there um <clears throat> to warn the spider neznar that they're coming which is fair enough and there is some treasure so neznar's divinations are accurate buried in the shallow rubble at the bottom of the rift is the crushed skeleton of a dwarf wearing gauntlets of ogre power uh, the remains can be found with a successful uh, dc check right so we need uh we need a skeleton so let's chuck a skelly out bump um we're going to hide it because they haven't found it yet we are going to uh not do that uh, yes, we are. We're going to do that. We're going to configure it and make this, enable this as a item pile. Um, and we're going to make this a effectively a vault. Yep, we can make it as a vault. That's absolutely fine. Um, do we want to delete when it's done? No, we don't. Um, that's all good. All we need to do now is give it some items. So the item we want is Gauntlets of Ogre Power. So we've got those in the SRD, but I want to copy them over to my items over here. Uh, wrong place. Items, items. Gauntlets of Ogre Power. So, whoops. Get carried away with stupid voices instead of actually doing that. I know, this is starting to get untidy again. I will sort it out, I promise. Honest, Gov. Let's put Lightbringer into weapons for a start. Okay, so this Gauntlets of Ogre Power, let's link this to our item here, just so that we've got that nice and easy. And then we're going to chuck our Gauntlets of Ogre Power in here, and I'm going to get rid of... Uh, going to get rid of that. probably a better way to do that but that's just easy done it okay so they can search the body they can find gauntlets of ogre power all right uh the remains can be found with a successful so let's close that a successful skill ability equals wisdom skill equals perception Oh, it's already got the DC. DC 20. Check. Uh, each character searching can attempt one check per hour. Um, each character search, blah, 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 blah. Characters who search for more than one hour might alert the nearby creature, uh, sorry, the creatures nearby to their presence at your discretion. Yeah, and I would pretty much go if the whole party is searching i would pick the person with the highest search and give them advantage and just like it's a group effort that's how i would do that um, rather than each character searching individually um, it's just if they're searching as a team they should get those bonuses as a team take the best searcher give them advantage job done if they don't find it then they can carry on for another hour um, what's the chances though they're going to go digging you know unless they observe and watch these bugbears you know, it's like, what what are they up to? What are they trying to achieve? Okay, so that's pretty much that area. That's, it's just a combat area. Um, it's just a bundle with a bit of treasure. All right, so what about the temple? Moving on, we're getting closer and closer to Neznar uh, and his ridiculousness. Okay, so... Pop this in. Make it bold. Uh, do, 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 do. And there's a second piece of text here depending so bear with me I'm going to put this in just give me a moment I'll come back to explain what's going on sort of <laughs> okay so we're over in this area here 
So six cracked and splintered marble pillars line the walls of this hall, a nine foot statue of a dwarf seated on a throne. Uh, a mighty stone warhammer across his lap occupies the north end. Large emerald gleam in his eyes. Dust and debris have been swept to one side of the floor. Half a dozen bedrolls and backpacks are neatly arranged around a rough built fire pit uh, before the statue. A wooden table stands on the west side. Now this map's got none of those details on it, but that's okay. We don't need to have them on the map. Um, if the room's occupants aren't aware of the characters as they enter, then we can also add two bugbears stand by the table flanking a drow dressed in black leather armour and robes. Okay. Um, the drow clutches a black staff with a, curve, with a carved spider on top and frowns when he sees you. It seems I must deal with you myself. A pity it must end this way. And that actually is going to be Nesnar. We finally get Nesnar in here. Um, I created Nesnar, didn't I? Where uh, NPCs? Did I put him in NPCs? Na 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 Nesnar. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> right, let's slap Nesnar out there. We can pop him in there. Oh look, he was his dark vision. Uh, so two bugbears stand near the table, flanking a drow. So we need our bugbears. Always need more bugbears. Uh, Flanking him. One of these either side. That's lovely. Um, and he's dressed in his black leather armour and stuff so we can describe that. Uh, and obviously I need to come up with a better voice for Nesna when I actually run it rather than that nonsense. Okay, let's pop in some of these bits of information. That need to be in here because this is obviously a, a major encounter area this one bosh lots of text and stuff so uh nesna the black spider uh is accompanied by two bugbears who defend their leader to the death if the doppelganger from over here oh hang on this doppelganger over here uh if that doppelganger from area w18 uh, retreated to this area, it assumes the guise of Nundro Rockseeker so that Nesnar can use the dwarf as leverage to force the party's surrender, although the spider won't actually harm the doppelganger. Yeah, crafty. Well, just sensible. Um, that means... Right, so what I kind of need to do then is, because this is going to look like a drow, if it goes over here, it's now going to look like Nundro. Um, so what I'm going to do is find well, your monstrosity, another doppelganger. Um, what was his frippin' name? V. H. Alak. Okay, so we're going to put another one of him in, but we're going to change his appearance, of course. Uh, and his appearance is going to be... Um, Oh, I'm not sure if I've got it uploaded like that. Let's just let's just do it again. Let's just do it again. Um, I should have. Well, it's possible I don't have it downloaded. I might need to uh, pause the video while I go and find Nundro. Oh no, there he is. I have that one. Okay, that's my Nundro Rock Seeker. Um, for those of you who haven't worked it out yet, I've got a player character called Nundro. <laughs> it's the same guy. Um, we had a party who ran this and um, and actually we did something interesting with Nundro who ended up falling into the um, the forge of spells um, and rather than dying he um, came to an agreement with the powerful being that powers the forge of spells that nobody else knows about and he came out of it as a warlock. Um, so it was just a, an interesting way to change it up uh, and just yeah. Yeah, it was, it was interesting. Something a bit different. Right, so here's Nundro, who, or he's not Nundro, he's Velek. So I need to hide him because he. the chances are he won't be required, but if he is, I've got him on standby. Right, segue again. All right, so if they are expecting troubles, the bugbears hide behind the pillars and Nesnar casts invisibility on himself and stands near the table. So based on that, I'm going to hide all of these so that I don't accidentally reveal them um, 
if the party walk in and surprise them, I'll just reveal them. If they know that they're coming, I can move their tokens before then unhiding them just to uh, make that nice and clear. And of course, I would be um, coming in here and setting um, Nesnar to invisible. All right. Um, and it says if they expect in troubles, they hide behind the table. Make a dexterity stealth check for the bugbears. The lowest roll is their DC of that with uh, the lowest roll is the DC of the wisdom perception check. Blah 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 blah. Very standard stuff. Okay. We have a statue in here, of course, the big fat statue. Now I've got to pronounce a name. So the statue is uh, the statue in the room depicts uh, Dumathoin. Dumathoin. Uh, the Dwarven God of Mining. Any character proficient in the religion skill recognises the depiction. So just proficiency, you've got it. Uh, the statue is beautifully carved. Its emerald eyes are worth 5,000 gold each. Um, I'll deal with that when, they, when I get to it. Um, I don't think I'm going to bother creating a particular item with it. I think if they take them, um, I can do that on the fly. That's really quite easy. Or I can just give them the 5,000 gold in gem form. Uh, a character climb statue pry loose a gem with a DC 10 strength check. If either gem is removed, the character must succeed on a dexterity throw or the six pillars that line the walls crumble, triggering a ceiling collapse. Every creature in the room uh, must make a DC 15 dexterity saving throw. A creature takes uh, 2d10 bludgeoning damage from falling rubble on a failed save and half as much on a successful one. A creature still in the room one round later is buried and killed as the chamber fills with stone, at which point the area becomes impassable. In other words, they totally, totally wreck this entire area. Of course, there is another route um, around the temple regardless. Um, I'm just going to leave that purely down to role play. There's no point in building a trap for that in the unlikely head that happens. Um, yep, I'm just going to stick with that. That's fine. We also have a table in here that's obviously got something of note. So the table is strewn with notes and maps showing Nesnar's efforts to explore the mine so far. There is also a sack of treasure amid the papers. Uh, there's a whole bit here that I need to add on. This is, this is quite a big journal entry, this one, for everything. Because it's such a big area. Uh, there's a section here about play, role playing Nesnar. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm probably not even going to need that. Um, I might read it and then go, oh, yeah, it's not the way I want to do it. <laughs> but I'm going to leave that in. Draw a line under it. Uh, development. So uh, the creatures in Area W18 can hear sounds of combat in this room. So that's these guys here. Uh, if they haven't already been dealt with, they'll arrive three rounds later. If characters capture Nesnar and deliver him to the town's master, uh, town master's hall in Phandalin, he's locked up until Sildar or another representative of the Lord's Alliance can escort him to Neverwinter to face interrogation. Yeah, um, we had this discussion before. My Nesnar is very unlikely to get captured, and I did specifically give him, um, when I rebuilt him, I've specifically given him spells to help him evade that. Things like spider climb, web to restrict them, darkness so he can escape. Um, he's got, uh, what else did I give him? Invisibility, yes, darkness, pyrotechnics, suggestion, uh, and even slow to, uh, to stop pursuit. So I try to make him, or give him the tools he might need to escape if things are going wrong. He is not going to auto escape. I don't like to do that. If the players come up with a plan to thwart him, then they should absolutely be able to win that. If they don't thwart him, he will go on to become a future problem, <laughs> either for revenge or, or something like that. OK, um, da, 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 da. unless the characters post guards outside Nesnar's cell in Phandalin, uh, then Hilia um, Halia Thornton will break him out of jail, smugs him out of Phandalin, and delivers him to custody of the leaders of the Zentarim. What happens to Nesnar up to that, after that point is up to you. Right, yeah. Okay, so basically, yeah, I'm gonna, he's going to try and escape rather than be captured. If he does get captured, fine. That's all good. Okay, Nesnar carries a potion of healing and a spider staff. So I need to make sure that his character under here 
He's got his spider staff, which is great. Um, potion of healing. So let's go here to our potions. Potion of healing. He's going to have that as well. Uh, in addition, he carries an iron key with a head shaped like an anvil. This key unlocks the door to area 20. Uh, because that's so close, I'm not going to bother creating an extra item for it. That's fine. Um, Nesnar's exploration of Wave Echo Cave has yielded some treasure, which he keeps in a black leather sack on the wooden table. The sack contains blah, 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 blah. Right, good. So, I'm going to put a sack here. Um, what's in there? Some money, 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 money. Some uh, nine small gemstones worth 10 gold each. What have we got in the way of gemstones that are worth 10 gold each? Okay, there we go. We might have something else that's... Yeah, they're too expensive. Too expensive. Pale blue quartz. So let's let's do a mixture of these. So let's slap this down here. Um, so it says nine. So let's go four of these. Not 14. Four of these. Apologies if you heard my phone in the background. Um... Double click this. This is an item pile. Um, it's in a sack, isn't it? So let's configure pile. Make sure it's that. We're going to make it a container um, that is closed but not locked. And let's find a let's find a sack. Okay. Uh, da, 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 tokens, is it? Uh, nope. That's enemies, isn't it? I want. I think it is. Uh, Gosh, sometimes I just forget where stuff is. Core data. <laughs> uh, icons, we can go for here. We can go for containers, um, bags. There we go. There we go. Finally get there. Uh, let's go with the coin pouch. Just We're only looking for an image here. That's fine. Um, let's make sure we've got the whole of this. And we can copy that and just pop it in there regardless. It doesn't matter about locked. It's not going to be. All right, we can do that. There we go. We've got a little pouch. It's got four pale blue quartz. It's got five agates in there. Whoops, a daisy. We, yep, oh, we do need to do that. It was an accident that works. Uh, so the sack contains 190 electrum. There we go. It's got 130 gold. Uh, ooh, 15 platinum pieces, the gemstones, and a dwarven ale mug made from hammered electrum. Um, worth 80 gold. Do you know what? I'm just going to put a Moonstone Goblet in there. That'll do. Let's face it, the party don't really care. If it's not a plot item, if it's just treasure, they don't really care. They care about its value, not anything else. Uh, it just saves creating millions and millions of things. I think I've got enough for now. <laughs> Alright, update the item pile. That's it. Now, because that's on the table, I'm going to hide that until they say that they're, look they're actually looking you know, around and stuff. They've got to deal with these dudes first okay now um i've got nesnar's got all the stuff he needs which is good um the only thing we haven't produced that we possibly could is the key so that's going to be a locked door isn't it and that's going to leave us for our last section which is the priest's quarters that may or may not change what we do um about nesnar's key so priest quarters the last area here We've got some general type. So the door to this room is locked, requiring thieves' tools and a successful pick locks. Um, Nesnar carries the key. Unless the characters are being stealthy, any activity at the door attracts the attention of Nesnar and his allies in 19, uh, prompting them to come and kick the living hell out of the PCs. Well, attempt to. Hopefully they won't. Not just a couple of bugbears. All right, so dust... Uh, dusty draperies of red and gold adorn the walls of this room, which also contain a bed and a brazier. A badly dishevelled dwarf lies unconscious on the cold stone floor. So this is actually Nundro um, in here. So I am going to use my uh, do, 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 my players, and I'm going to chuck my Nundro out here for that purpose. There he is, lying unconscious on the floor. So let's make him unconscious. Uh, blimey, yep, all of these. Where is it? Uh, that's prone. Do, do, do. 
Got prone more than once. Well, this is embarrassing, isn't it? <laughs> um, you, you should be. I should be used to this. Uh, stunned, unconscious. That one. There we go. So we can pop him there. He's nice and unconscious. Lovely jubbly. All right. So um, let me just copy this last little bit in here, and we're we're very nearly done with the whole of this adventure and chapter, which is great. So lying on the floor is Nundro. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, a dwarf commoner. Well, he's not. He's not, he's not, he's not in my world. Uh, and the last of the three rock seeker brothers. Nesnar kept him alive because he thought the dwarf might know more about the mine than he admitted. The spiders interrogated uh, Nundro every day. So, development. <clears throat> Why so difficult? Because <laughs> I'm a Muppet, that's why. Uh, Nundro is grateful if the heroes rescue him, of course, and he offers to tag along for the duration of their stay in Wave Echo Cave, which probably won't be very long once they've dealt with this bit. Um, but he actually doesn't know anything more. If the characters deal with Nesnar and the bugbears, this area serves as a safe place to rest before continuing their exploration. That's on the assumption they come here before going over here, of course. Um... <clears throat> So they can rescue Nundro, lovely jubbly, uh, and that's that bit dumb. Yeah, kind of weird, isn't it? So, what's next? So Gundren and Nundro, assuming Nundro survives, take over the administration of the new mine uh, for the adventure services um, to their family. They gladly award the party a 10% share in the mine's profits. It's up to you how much you give the players and how often consider giving the characters a sum of 255 gold pieces at the beginning of each chapter of the next chapters to represent this reward that's a nice way of doing it uh, the heroes now have now defeated the spider and undone his plots cleared Fandolin of the ruffians who threatened its people and reclaimed the lost mine of wave echo cave uh, and it says here about if you aren't playing the subsequent chapters in adventures uh, there's no new plots need to surface we will be planning those out, just not yet. So that, ladies and gentlemen, concludes, mostly, unless there's any details we come back to do, that concludes those first four chapters of Fandolin Below, The Shattered Obelisk. Um, so what are we going to do next? Next we are going to look at the one thing we haven't done very much of in here, is we were looking at the um, the quest log and we haven't added the quests for this section into the quest log. So we're going to do that. Um, I might do those ones off camera, but then we want to look at the Dragons of, um, of Ice Spire Peak and look at the encounters from that module that we're then going to integrate into this campaign so we're going to go back to figma figure out where those chapters are going to where those indiv individual encounters are going to come in um, and create those individual encounters and again expand on our quest log so it becomes there's lots of different side quests that they may or may not do um, if you're using xp to advance that's a good way for them to be able to get that bit of extra p xp to you know to level up if they're not, if you're not using XP and you're using the uh, milestone achievements, it just will stretch out some of the encounters, make things a little slow the game down a little bit, which very much depends on your personal taste. But this is ready to rock and roll. There are things that I probably will change. Um, just get rid of, <laughs> get rid of a couple of my random characters here. Just need to check those sounds and things. Otherwise, it's good. Thank you for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next, well, next chapter. Bye.